Today we've got a crazy story of entitled parents ruining a baby shower. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, entitled parents can be pretty racist. This story takes place about two and a half weeks ago, around 8 p.m. I work at Burger King, so you know this is going to be fun. Around 8, a fresh 2022 BMW pulls into the drive-thru. The lady orders and all seems well, but here's a small detail that'll help explain what'll happen. She ordered three family bundles, six other sandwiches, six large fries, and six drinks. A family bundle itself is four burgers, four medium fries, and four four-piece nuggets itself. So yeah, this was a large, inexpensive order. She pays and I tell her to give me a moment so I can get the change, since we didn't have enough at the back. She doesn't complain, yell, or even make a face. She just says, take your time, sir. So I go and get the change. It was about five or six minutes and boy, as soon as I walk towards the window, she rips it. Where's your freaking manager? This is theft and I'm calling the police. I say, um, I have our change, ma'am, but if you'd like to see my manager, I can go get her. She says, do it right now, you darn thief. I say, okay, give me one minute. So I walk around, tell my manager what's going on, and she sighs and says I can handle it. So I just shrug and walk back. I said, my manager's busy, ma'am, but I can help you if you have an issue. She says, the issue is that you stole my money and tried to walk off, brat. I say, uh, I literally have your change right here in my hand. If I could have had two seconds to give it to you, you'd have it. She says, don't get smart with me, you little slur. I know you wanted to take my money. I'm mixed for the record. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. First off, that was inappropriate and uncalled for. If I wanted your money, I wouldn't be here to hand it to you, now would I? She says, just give me the darn money so I can leave. I said, fine. So I hand her the money and go about my day for two minutes. Then my manager calls me and tells me they need help preparing the order. I help them and I'm about to hand them the order when Entitled Dad leans forward and says, I don't want this insert hard R racial slur touching my food. Remake it now. My manager snaps around like a Roblox character and walks to the window and says, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Can you repeat it? He says, you heard me. I don't want this insert hard R racial slur touching my food. Remake it or I'm calling the cops and your little thief. My manager gives them the sweetest smile and says, Sorry, drive throughs closed for the day, and closes the window. They peel out the drive through and come inside. Entitled Dad says, Give us our freaking food, witch. The Entitled Mother says, That's it. I'm tired of you minimum wage slurs. I'm calling the police. My cool manager says, Oh, go ahead. I'll tell them all about the racial slurs and profanity you've been throwing at us. Entitled Mother paces the lobby, and eventually Sweet Kid walks in. The sweet kid says, Mom, Dad, let's just go, please. I feel kind of sorry for her. She's as red as can be, and you can tell she's embarrassed of how her parents are acting. The entitled mother says, No, these thieves stole our food and tried to steal our money. I can't let these poor people deal with that. Entitled dad says, Besides, you're a kid, so shut up and get back in the car. We'll be out there soon. The sweet kid just looks exhausted, looks at us and mouths, Sorry, before walking out. I say, Listen, I didn't take your darn money, and the only reason you haven't gotten your food is because you're being racist and offensive. She screamed and hollered a little more, same thing with the dad, but me and my manager just sat there because, I mean, what can we do? Argue back? We called the cops, but none had showed yet. So eventually they left, but the mom didn't leave without something snide, no no no. She left me a sweet little note. She said, OOP, she called me by my actual name. I didn't have a name tag at the time and never had a previous encounter with her. Keep an eye out, because we wouldn't want you to have an accident. And then she left. We called the cops again, explained everything, and now I wait. That's all everyone, thanks for reading this far and I'll keep you updated on any changes. Update, so I got a call from my manager yesterday. The same lady showed up to Burger King asking for me. My manager said she seemed frantic, just off. Come to find out she was on drugs that day. My manager called the cops, and now she sits in a jail cell. So, moral of the story, don't be entitled, just be a decent human being. I guess the cops must not be responding in this area or something because God forbid they show up. That's so frustrating how you have these people literally threatening you, literally handwriting a threat to you, and you can't get the cops to show up. 
You have a written, handwritten admission of guilt and they still can't show up. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of these entitled parents, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, I rock bottomed an entitled dad at work after he slapped my manager. This happened last year, but I just discovered the subreddit so I feel like this story fits here. I work at a music store. My store sells instruments, obviously, rents out instruments, repairs instruments, and provides private lessons. I get some crazy customers every now and then, but this is one where I got physical. This mom, dad, and their child, who looks to be about 10-ish years old, walks in and I could immediately tell the kid is attention deficit. Super hyper, asking questions to his parents randomly, running to the pianos and pounding on the keys, and just wouldn't stop his hyperactivity. Anyway, they come and want to rent out a trumpet because the kid wants to be in band and orchestra. Dad just had a frown on his face the whole time while mom was being very civil and at the same time trying to calm the kid down while dad just had the I really don't want to be here at all look on his face. I tell the parents that renting a trumpet is $26 a month before tax. $20 goes into equity that can be used to purchase an instrument in the future and the other $6 is for our liability damage waiver in case it gets damaged, lost, stolen, etc. That extra $6 a month would get him something else if the worst happened. The mom agrees to everything, but the dad scoffed and rolled his eyes and asked if the LDW is optional. I tell them yes, but it's very highly recommended because if something happens to the trumpet, they will be liable for the cost if they don't get the LDW. He assures me that nothing will happen and that he doesn't need to pay extra for BS. I didn't tell the parents this, but based on what I'm seeing out of the kid's behavior, I had that feeling in my bones that something was gonna happen to the trumpet due to the kid's hyperactivity. It takes roughly 5 minutes to do the paperwork for a rental. About halfway through, dad says to mom, this is taking for freaking ever. I'm gonna walk to Home Depot and get my tools. There's a Home Depot right across from the parking lot. Mom says that the gentleman, me, is almost done and tells him to be patient. He just tells her to grab the kid and meet him there when it's done. He then left. Mom apologized for his behavior and finished the rental with that guilty look on her face. After mom and hyper kid left, I joked with my coworker and told him, just wait and watch them come back in the near future with a damaged trumpet without the LDW. He agreed but just laughed it off like I did, and I thought that was the end of everything. My joke turned out to be a foreshadow. Three days later, I'm working with my manager and the dad comes in by himself with the trumpet out of its case. His pupils were also dilated so I had to guess he was high on something that was not weed. The trumpet's lead pipe was bent at a darn near 45 degree angle and there was a nasty dent in the bell. When I asked him what happened, the guy straight up said, you jerks rented us out a bad trumpet that can't withstand damage. I work in construction, and I know that metal doesn't bend after it's dropped. That was BS because, from personal experience, brass instruments do bend and dent if they're dropped. And especially this is a low brand instrument which we do normally rent out to beginner players. It's way more sensitive. He was demanding that he gets another trumpet with better quality. My manager asked him if he signed up for the LDW. Dad said, heck no, I didn't want to pay for anything but a rental fee. My manager then told him that we couldn't get him another trumpet without the LDW, so he's liable for the cost of repair. Dad wasn't having any of it, but my manager did tell him that it's our company policy. On to the climax, he then grabbed my manager by her wrist and started making claims about how the customer is supposed to be treated right. I went into rage because, you know, you don't put your hands on a woman like that. I told him to get the freak out right now. That's when he reached his hand back and smacked her in the face like a pimp. Fearing for my manager's safety, I quickly grabbed him by the bottom of his chin and slammed him onto the floor. I screamed in his face while holding him down firm, You chose not to get the LDW. The trumpet is clearly damaged and you are liable for it, not wanting to pay an extra $6. Now get out, now, and take your broken trumpet with you. I was afraid that he would start fighting me back, but he thankfully did not. I released him and he walked out all huffed up and didn't take the trumpet with him, all while flipping us off on his way out. After his high enraged butt left, 
I looked at my manager, whose face was already beginning to bruise, and asked if she was okay. She was, and she thanked me for standing up for her, but also told me that this is something that had to get corporate's attention. Long story short, after the rock bottom and corporate being notified, I didn't get fired for assaulting a customer because 1. Dad started everything, and 2. Who the freak knows what could have happened if I didn't stop the jerk from doing more harm. The next day, which was my day off, my manager called me and said the mom called the store and apologized for what happened. From what I was told, she was already in the process of filing for divorce due to his drug addiction and abuse. She also came to the store later and paid for a dirt cheap trumpet to purchase. Since the rental was on the dad's credit card and he chose to leave the broken one behind, his next month payment would be the cost of repair. This was back in October of 2021, so today I'm hoping that the mom and kid are away from that jerk, and I hope the kid learned how to take better care of the instrument. I guess it was probably safer in the immediacy of the situation to get him out of there and just gone, considering he was already laying his hands on other people, but it would have been nice to actually see this guy get charged for what he did. Our next story is Spoiled Younger as Freak Sister. I have a 7 year old younger sister who's spoiled way too much. My sister can literally be expelled and my parents would support whatever got her expelled. Also when she asked for a Barbie dream house, she has never whatsoever been interested in that. I saw it in the Amazon orders less than an hour later. The funny thing? Two days after she got it, it's stuffed in her closet and she forgot about it. She's also practically addicted to her iPad, Roblox mainly. She screams when she can't have it in the car, or she doesn't have it for three minutes. I wish I was exaggerating. She's been sleeping in my parents' room for like two years now, has not touched her bed for two years. For example, when my older sister wanted to sleep in my parents' room, they brought her to a therapist for sleeping problems, as they were so eager to get her out. Like, my dad's been kicked to the couch for two whole years. She never gets grounded. If she does, supernatural event, she gets it back almost immediately because she did one good thing. It's freaking annoying. Honestly, like, I wonder if things are good between OP's parents because I'm surprised that they would be that complacent with allowing the daughter to take his spot in the bed. But I would agree with everything OP's saying here, it's gross how spoiled they're allowing their kid to be. Roblox is cool and all, but I hate hearing how often these parents allow their kids to just be on there all the time. And I don't even mean like every night after dinner or something. I mean like they're always trying to be on there. Our next story is, Entitled In-Laws want us to invite sister-in-law's friends to my son's birthday party. Okay, so we have my entitled mother-in-law and my entitled sister-in-law in this post. So my little boy's turning four this year. He's autistic and hasn't really wanted to play with other children yet, so no playmates to invite to the party this year. Maybe after he starts school, he'll have some next year. We'd been talking about doing his party at an indoor water park for kids, or an indoor trampoline park. My son loves to swim and jump, but jumping is his favorite. He goes for about 3 hours multiple days a week. After looking at prices, minimum guest rules, and the risks of overstimulation, we decided that the trampoline park was the way to go. Well, that's not good enough for any of them. The other night I tried to explain it all to them, especially the fact that with the entire family, plus entitled sister-in-law's boyfriend, it only brought our numbers up to 10. We need a minimum of 13 for the water park. For the trampoline park, it's 7. The water park is also almost $400 more expensive and doesn't include food like the trampoline park does. They kept saying we should make it work, that he'll definitely like it better over his safe place. First, entitled mother-in-law said we should invite some woman they know and her kids. I've never met this mom or her children. I don't know if they'll get along with my son or not. And I don't want to spend so much money to invite kids who may not even try to play with my son on his birthday. Entitled sister-in-law got excited and began talking about how she could invite three of her friends. We're already inviting her boyfriend, so she's not as bored. These are not good girls. They're 17 to 19 year olds. Entitled sister-in-law is 19, who smoke weed, smoke cigarettes, vape, and drink more alcohol than I've seen any alcoholic consume at once. Entitled mother-in-law thought this was a great idea. Then entitled sister-in-law wouldn't be bored and can go off on her own. 
to, you know, not spend time with the birthday boy. I felt like it was going to turn into a real argument, so I just disengaged and said, I guess we'll look into all the options. And no, they didn't offer to pay the difference for the party they are insisting we throw. My boyfriend wasn't there at the time, so he couldn't weigh in, but he agrees with me and said they're being obnoxious about it. If we go to the water park, it'll just feel like we went to entitled sister-in-law's party instead of my son's. I'm almost nervous to tell them that we decided to get gourmet cookies instead of cake since he likes them more. Not super dramatic or crazy, but I kind of wanted to vent about it a bit. I think the real problem here is OP's basically allowing them to have a say in the party when they're not part of the party planning committee. OP needs to put their foot down and say, we're going to the trampoline park. He prefers it. If you don't like it and you don't want to support him, don't show up. Go ahead, show your true colors. See how they respond to that. This next story is, father used our annual nice dinner as an excuse to do business. This was back in maybe 2006, 2007. My family went once a year to a nice restaurant, anybody remember Sizzler? To have the buffet, or very occasionally one of the entrees that were ever decreasing in quality. My father is always an interesting character to take out to eat. He makes tone-deaf jokes at waitstaff and fusses about the food, even when he doesn't mean it, causing anxiety all around for everyone involved. Important to note also, my dad manages a large frozen food distribution company. This one trip was particularly memorable. He ordered a steak, had it sent back to the kitchen twice, and then asked for the manager. The manager comes out and asks what's wrong, can he cop anything, all of that. My father says, you could get me a better quality steak to start, but hey, that's okay, I know it's hard to find good stuff up here. Actually, I think I can help you. And launches into a sales pitch in the middle of dinner. The manager and server were baffled. My brother launched himself back toward the buffet, loudly declaring that he was getting ice cream. I threatened to walk home until my brother dragged me off for ice cream too. My mother, bless her, threatened to leave my father to walk home. By the time we got back to the table, the manager had retreated and my parents weren't speaking. I think everyone in the family would deny any memory of this at this point. It was more than 15 years ago, and we'd all be content pretending it never happened. This is how you just end up fizzling out having these experiences going out with your family, because you just cannot tolerate being there because you know it's going to go wrong. This next story is, Entitled mother and entitled brother ruined a baby shower. So I was invited to a friend's, we aren't super close and she literally had to pay for me to attend since I'm out of work currently and she wanted me there, baby shower. Now to note, Bestie has a very entitled mother and spoiled entitled brother. Her brother has autism, diagnosed at 5, and was doted on by entitled mother for his entire life. Set the stage, you got Bestie and her boyfriend getting ready to pop the balloon to reveal the gender of the baby. Entitled mother and entitled brother sitting at the nearest table playing loud games and music on their phones not even interested, and the godparents on either side of the parents. Balloon pops, it's a baby boy! Everyone shows shocked faces, we all thought girl. While everyone's congratulating Bestie and her boyfriend, entitled brother suddenly screams, No! We're all baffled and look at him confused. It's supposed to be a girl, I want a niece! He yells at Bestie and Bestie looks hurt. Random guest says, Maybe the next will be a girl. He says, No, this one has to be a girl. You have to have a girl first. He yells and Bestie starts crying and causing Entitled Mother to stand. Entitled Mother says, Quit boo-hooing, Bestie. It's not the end of the world to say the real gender to make Entitled Brother happy. So stop lying and tell us the real gender. Bestie says, It is the real gender. Entitled Brother says, You're lying. He screams and that's when Bestie runs into the house in tears. Her aunts and sisters run after her, as did her boyfriend. I walked to Entitled Mother and Entitled Brother and said this, Listen, I get that you wanted a niece first, but there was no reason to upset Bestie over it. Today was supposed to be an exciting day for her and boyfriend, I say, and Entitled Mother scoffs. She's lying, and we'll find out when my granddaughter is born, she says, and that was it for me. You both need to leave before someone calls the law. Then I walked away. These people sound honestly kind of horrendous. 
if somebody is so unsupportive that they can make you burst into tears during your baby shower, you should probably cut them off, no matter how much it may hurt. Can't hurt any less than having your entire baby's existence being shamed upon. Our next story is Friends Infantilizing Incestuous Mother. A close friend of mine who we'll call Jake asked me to write his story here as he's pretty crap with words and doesn't know how to put his feelings down. He has autism which wasn't diagnosed until he was already an adult and moved out of his mother's place and went no contact. His mother, who we'll call Wacky Wanda, has always treated Jake like a baby, from the time he was born up until he went no contact with her. He tells me that as far back as he can remember, she would make him wear bibs at the dinner table and always hand feed him. She claimed it was because he was a special child that needed the extra help. His father Frank would always chastise Wacky Wanda for this, saying that he would never grow up if she kept babying him. She would get pissed and tell him that he was being ridiculous and that she loved her baby boy so much. Way too much if you asked me. Jake began to believe that he was developmentally challenged because of her. Wacky Wanda would show up at his school and throw a fit when the teachers wouldn't pull Jake out of his class to see her. He began to deal with bullying from other kids who would call him a mama's boy and tease him about wanting his mommy all the time. As Jake got older, he started to fight back against the bullying. Eventually, he started yelling at his wacky Wanda whenever she would show up and tell her to go home and to leave him alone. This never went over well and he tells me she would sit alone in her room and pout crying about how he'd hurt her feelings. He would always apologize and she would coo at him and pinch his cheeks and say that she couldn't stay mad at him because he was her baby boy and he was all she had in life. Completely forgetting she had a husband by the way. So freaking manipulative. Once Jake was a teenager, Jake started acting out and becoming more independent from wacky Wanda. I don't know if everyone knows this but not all autistic people are built the same. Jake's a very good looking guy. He's one of those too pretty to look at type of guys. He started rebelling by getting his dad to let him get tattoos. He started smoking cigarettes and pot and began hanging out with the goth and morbid crowd in high school. He listened to heavy metal music and wore a leather jacket, eyeliner and black nail polish. His black hair was always cropped short and he smoothed it back with gel. And from the pictures I saw? Hooey. Even I said if I'd seen that walking by me, I'd be turning my head to check him out. That gave him an ego boost. Not to mention he's very good looking, even without the makeup. Wacky Wanda hated Jake's style and said it made him look like a clown and that his beautiful skin was too precious to destroy with tattoos and makeup. She threw his clothes away more than once, replacing them with clothes that she approved of. Frank would always take him to the mall so he could buy new ones, and Jake took pleasure out of throwing out the clothes Wacky Wanda gave him. She would still make them eat dinner at the table every night. She was one of those women that was very traditional about family dinner. They always sat down and she put a bib on Jake and hand fed him his meal until he was finished. She would even spit on a napkin and wipe his face if he got anything on it. Jake noticed that whenever she did this, she would side eye Frank with a smirk. Like she wanted him to be jealous or something? Weird. The last time they ate together as a family, as soon as Jake sat down, she pulled out the bib. He tried to ask her not to do this as he was 16 and fully capable of feeding himself. She chastised him and told him to do as he was told. The bibs were too small and wouldn't even fit around his neck. He tried telling her this, but she would just sit it on his chest and then start hand feeding him by making plain noises. Jake tore the bib off and told her enough was enough. He was 16 years old and didn't need to be fed like a baby. Wacky Wanda got upset and started whining. Frank suddenly blew up and told her to stop her crap because this was getting too creepy, even for him to tolerate. He tried to support her in the dread that her son was getting older and no longer needed her, but this was too much to take. Jake went to his room and didn't come out for the rest of the night. Wacky Wanda pouted and cried for more than a day in hopes of making Jake apologize for refusing her, but he refused. She realized she was losing the battle with keeping her son a baby forever. Time to amp up the crazy. Jake came home from school the next day and found Wacky Wanda in the kitchen dressed up in all black, black eyeliner and lipstick, and had even dyed her hair black. She had spiked bracelets and a choker. She looked ridiculous. 
How I wish I could have seen a picture of this, because it sounded hilarious. Jake was shocked and asked her just what the freak she was doing. He noticed the shirt she was wearing was cut way too low and he could see way more cleavage than he was comfortable with. She bounded over to him and asked him if he liked it. He was too shocked to respond with what he wanted to say and said, sure. He tells me that she would push out her chest towards him in an effort to make him look. For months after that, that was all wacky Wanda would dress like. She would openly brag to her friends that Jake copied her style and she was so proud of him. She used to wear turtlenecks and mom jeans with slip-on shoes. She was the farthest thing from goth punk you can imagine. One night, Jake was asleep. She climbed into bed with him and tried to cuddle with him. He woke up and felt someone touching him inappropriately. He turned around and saw wacky Wanda. He freaked out and told her to get the freak out of his room. She pouted and cried until Jake went to leave. He noticed his door was locked and he had to unlock it to get out. He had to lock himself in the bathroom and she sat outside the door begging him to come sleep with her. Jake shouted at her that she was touching him inappropriately and that it wasn't okay and it was weird that she did this with the door locked. She screamed that that's how mommies show their love until Frank came out of the room to yell at her for the way she was acting and that it was creepy for a mother to want to cuddle her 16 year old son with the door locked. She screamed that he didn't understand the bond she and Jake had and that he was jealous. Jake screamed that they had no bond. Wacky Wanda cried and Frank shouted at her to move away from the door or he would do something he might regret later. He took Jake and they went to sleep at a motel for the night. Jake told his dad everything that happened. Frank finally had enough. He couldn't stand the weird and creepy behavior from Wacky Wanda anymore. He filed for divorce and got custody of Jake and Wacky Wanda was given visitation rights. Wacky Wanda was mandated to attend parenting classes and therapy, and she actually went under the threat of losing any and all rights to her son, of course. But she staunchly refused to believe she had ever done anything wrong. Jake dreaded visitation, but as he was still a minor, he had no choice in the matter. He would go and make sure to lock his door to prevent her from coming in. She did give him space when he was at her house, for a while. When Jake was 17, his dad paid for him to enroll in driver's ed and got him a car. This went over like a fart in a church because Wacky Wanda got pissed when Jake pulled up to her house in a brand spanking new car. She lost it and called up Frank to scream at him about how she was endangering her baby boy. He hung up on her. Things got worse once Jake started seeing a girl at school. She was a pretty blonde girl that dressed in similar fashion to Jake. When Wacky Wanda found out, she went insane. Jake was in his room sleeping and Wacky Wanda picked the lock. It was one of those push-in locks that a bobby pin can easily pick. What Jake told me next made my heart drop. She undressed herself, climbed into bed with him, and began doing things to him. He woke up and freaked out. He ran away from the house and drove back to his dad's in tears and they called the police. Wacky Wanda got arrested and imprisoned for 11 years. Jake became severely depressed and tried to end things more than once. His dad put him into therapy and he got better over time, but he still struggles with everything his mother had done to him. Jake was formally diagnosed and he's on medication that keeps him functional. He's one of the bartenders at my club and we're really close friends. He's best friends with my boyfriend Kyle. Jake has a girlfriend who's one of the sweetest women I've ever met. Jake and I have a connection because we've both have experienced similar activities from relatives and we're both stronger for having gone through that. Sorry this was so long but he wanted to share his story with everyone. I missed this part but after Jake ran away from Wacky Wanda's house, she went into hiding for nearly a week. She tried hiding out at her sister's place but she kicked her out once word spread about what had happened. She was found at the local church and arrested there. Now, I don't understand honestly how Wacky Wanda was able to get away with this kind of behavior for so long. Like, mentally, you could tell there's something wrong with Wacky Wanda. She should have been seeking some kind of help. I guess if they're an adult and they're staunchly claiming they don't need help, you can't really force them to. But you kind of feel like Jake should have been protected a little bit more here. I guess it goes to show that if it's your mother, sometimes everybody else will be willing to overlook it 
Maybe in part because they assume, oh well, a mother can't possibly do that kind of stuff to their kid. I don't know, but I definitely feel for Jake. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.